Good morning. Welcome to Trust Life with Louise Hay and how to explore life with our EFT and our tapping and our Qigong. There's so many things that we can do to balance ourselves. And as we practice these different things in little bits and little time periods and little five second intervals here and there, they become our lifestyle. We start to become aware of what our, when we're in an imbalance and we start to become aware of how we can shift back into balance by receiving information. It's all about receiving information. So June 20th was yesterday. Yesterday and today are the summer solstice and it's my birthday on June 20th. It's interesting because as I talked to my mother about my birth 62 years ago, she was telling me that it was one of her favorite births because the doctor wasn't there. <laughs> she actually had me with eight minute contractions and so 62 years ago there wasn't a lot of um, was a lot of interventionist help, but we lived in a small community in rural Manitoba, and so her doctor was very kind of hands off, and he actually wasn't even there. Um, but when my mom told the nurses that I was coming, they said, "Oh, your contractions are eight minutes apart. You really aren't having her," and they didn't call the doctor. And so when I did appear, <laughs> and the doctor wasn't there, and at that time the rule was they couldn't cut the umbilical cord until the doctor came to cut the umbilical cord. So. Mom said it was delightful because I was born, I was healthy, I was strong. She, they put her on, they put me on her tummy, and she said, "I just had half an hour with you, kind of all by myself, and it was wonderful." So I love that feeling. I love that knowing that um, that my birth was a wonderful thing for my mother, and especially for me too, because as a baby, our birth really does set up our cells for anxiety or contentment, or and so we can spend some time releasing things that happen to us all throughout our life. And so one of the things that Louise talks about here on June 20th is everything I need comes to me at the perfect time. I believe that everything I need to know is revealed to me, so I need to keep my eyes and ears open. When I had cancer, she had cancer, twice. I remember thinking that a foot reflexologist would be very helpful to me. One evening, I went to a lecture of some sort. Right after I sat down, a foot reflexologist sat next to me. We began to talk, and I learned that he even made house calls. I didn't have to look for him. He came to me. I also believe that whatever I need comes to me in the perfect time-space sequence. When something goes wrong in my life, I immediately start to think, all is well, it's okay. I know that this is all right. It's a lesson, an experience, and I'll pass through it. There is something here that is for my highest good. All is well, just breathe, it's okay. I do the best I can to calm myself so that I can think rationally about whatever is going on. And of course, I do work through something, work through everything. It may take a little time, but sometimes things that seem to be great disasters really turn out to be quite good in the end, or at least not the disasters that they seem to be in the beginning. Every event is a learning experience. I love that philosophy and it's one that I have adopted in my life as much as I possibly can. And in those times when things do look like they're totally chaotic and going off the rails, if we can breathe, if we can simply breathe and then look at the priority. Very often, especially when things are going off the rails, it's easy to get caught up into our emotions of that anxiety and that stress and that worry and that um, anger and bitterness and hatred, or depending on what's going on, and then take it out on the people that are closest to us. I've often thought that one of the biggest things that we are being tasked with in this life is how do we handle our relationships when life is not going the way we want them to? Do we take it out on the people closest to us? Do we lash out at them? Do we fight with them? Do we accuse them of things? Do we blame them for things? Our primary relationships are our personal um, path, our personal um, schooling. And so as we receive information from the universe and receive unbalanced processes from the universe, how do we handle our personal relationships in that process? 
breathe. Ho'oponopono comes in. I use that one a lot. <laughs> when I'm feeling triggered about things in my relationships, I step into that Ho'oponopono and see and ask myself, what is it about me that that is bringing up for me? What do I need to think about? What, do I, what, what am I being called and invited to release in myself? And that can be really revealing. I just had that specific experience and I was thinking about, I was angry about something that somebody else was doing. So sometimes we, I mean, always kind of, we clean up after each other, right? And so I had to clean up after one of my kids again. And I was very frustrated about cleaning up after that person. And my judgment in my mind said, you know, why can't they think of other people? Why can't they be considerate? And then as I thought about that and thought, okay, these are my issues. What is it that I'm feeling here? <laughs> I actually discovered later on that I was cleaning up after myself, <laughs> not them. But the issue came up for me and I started to think about, you know, what is it about cleaning up after other people? And the feeling of anger about their lack of consideration, my perception of their lack of consideration about other people. And as I started to use Ho'oponopono and love myself and say to myself, what is it in me? I love you. I'm sorry for whatever it is in me that is resonating with this having to clean up after other people. And a little voice, a little picture came to me of growing up in a home where my father was an alcoholic and it was quite a, a, a volatile place. And so I was always a peacemaker. I was always looking at how I could smooth things over so we didn't have to go into those angry spaces. We didn't have to go into those terrifying spaces. So I was always looking at what I could do to manage other people's energy. And what I would do, how I could be considerate so that they wouldn't have to feel these big things and then I wouldn't have to feel these big things. It was a very interesting, tiny little awareness. Ah, I want other people to be considerate of my feelings so that they don't rock the boat and so I don't rock the boat. Interesting awareness. So as we step into these things and, and life hands us and gives us opportunities to feel into ourselves, this is how the healing happens, especially with the Ho'oponopono and the, the receiving. Even though I'm very angry about this person leaving stuff around that I have to clean up again, I can receive the lesson. I can receive my own healing in this space. Tiny little things, lifestyle things that help us to heal and balance. I hope this has helped you today. Namaste. I love you.